Good evening and welcome everybody. Jose J. Garcia, real estate investor, coach, and mentor here. We got another coaching for you Sunday, 8 p.m. EST time, live every Sunday, different coaching, different topic, adding value. That is what it's here for. But before I get started, I want to take the time to wish every father out there a very happy Father's Day. I know it's Sunday. I know it's the holiday. Hope you had a great weekend. Well, let's jump on it. We got to keep going. We got to keep grinding. So that being said, I'm going to jump right on into this uh, this coaching this evening, which is transportation. Now, I chose this topic. We, we got a couple of topics we want we want to cover. There's a lot of emails being sent, a lot of questions. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. We'll keep making shorts, reels, coachings. You know, we will deliver the answers and add the value. But uh, yesterday, if you follow our social media, we were out at a community where we checked out a two-bedroom, one-bath single wide that we will be taking on and we'll be transporting. When it comes to transporting, transportation, that, that's the moving of a mobile home. It's There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of details and a lot of things that a lot of people are not aware of. That's why I want to cover that. We're going to cover a little bit more step-by-step -step on that individual mobile home, being it's so close to us, and we are going to take it most likely to keep it. We're, we're steady working on a portfolio, growing it more and more as always. You know, passive income, passive income can't go wrong. So, but that being said, transportation is the topic for this evening. Stay towards the end. I got some announcements for you, got some stuff for you. So you want to listen on that. But that being said, you know, recently we were moving another mobile home, which we ended up passing for different reasons, uh, just didn't meet certain criteria, just the way the specifics, you know, we're not going to focus too much on that. What I do want to focus on that one is the cost, the bill, because we got an actual real bill. I'm, I'm not going to talk random numbers and hopes and wishes. I'm going to show you a real bill from a transportation company that was sent to us as, here you go. It was up to me at that point to say, yes, let's go with it, meaning it's approved or no. Which was a no. It was a no because of the bill, but it was the home again. So, but all right. So I'm going to go ahead and share that screen. And then I want to talk about a few things towards the end also that are not covered in the bill in the transportation. Because again, mistakes that are not being uh, but seen. Let me see. Let me share the screen with you. And you know what? I'm going to talk about a few other things too. City uh, zones, buildings, specifics that also... Okay, go hand in hand with this. So, so here we go. You can see my screen. This is an actual bill, which, you know, I was actually looking at the calendar. Uh, it just expired, you know. So these movers, they hand you an actual quote and it's like a bill page. It's a breakdown. Now, one of the first things you want to know is that you are dealing with, you're doing business with a licensed and insured mover because there's a lot of things that can happen if the mobile home were to fall apart. Maybe something down a highway falls off the mobile home, hits a car. Or they damage it, maybe damage the community it's leaving out of, maybe into the new one. A lot of little parts. That's what I'm talking about. There can be a lot of costs, a lot of things that can happen. Life, you want to make sure you're dealing with a professional, licensed, and insured. And before they even give you a quote, that should be one of the first questions. Are you licensed and insured? A mover, transportation company, is nothing more than a contractor. Remember that. OK, that being said, so here is the bill that they gave us. Now, <clears throat> these bills will go up or will come down some depends on the amount of work, the amount of labor, the amount of material that they have to use. And when I say material, you remember when they take it from point A to point B, um, there is a, the setup. The, the bricks, the any lumber they have to use, you know, they have to set it up and make sure it's leveled. They have to strap it. So now they have they need all these things. And you know, with with prices of material coming down, that is a plus to us. About a half a year ago, I would say those prices were twice as much. So okay. But uh let's see. So you have uh let, let's go down down the list. So you have the single wide breakdown. It was a single wide, it was a 14 by 70. So the single wide breakdown means that they're gonna go out there and they're gonna take uh, it apart. The skirting has to come off. They have to unbolt it from the ground because it is strapped down. Uh, they'll have to obviously jack it up to put the axles. Okay. If it doesn't have axles, if it doesn't have a hitch, which those are broke down on here as well, you know, all these things start adding up. Okay. And there's a fee. I'll go ahead and say if you are doing business with the community, which we do a lot of, and the movers leave a mess, they will. Guess who has to clean up the mess? Unless you have some pre-arrangements that, hey, we'll move the home, but you got to take care of the lot. That's one thing. 
But uh, yes, that's another fee because they will make a mess. Those skirting everywhere, just, you know, their, their goal is to move it out of there. They're not housekeeping as they say, okay? So for the breakdown, you're looking at 1750 standard typically, okay? Welding, welding on anything, 350 minimum and 50 per hour, anything over three hours. What are they welding? Hitch, hook, tongue, what the mobile home is pulled with, you know, it's got different names to it. If it does not have that on there anymore, a lot of times it gets cut or gets taken off. It gets put under the mobile home. Okay. That means that the, they'll have to go ahead and weld it again. So that's 350. They're simply stating it on there. If it takes longer than three hours, they will charge 50 in addition. Should not take longer than that. Does not take that long to weld. Okay. Now, hitch mobile home. It says on here, mobile home hitch for sale, 250. Let's say the mobile home does not have a hitch. Okay, they put it under the house, they got lost, whatever it may be, they will bring their own, but it's an extra 250. So you see how you can start lowering these numbers if, if you're able to have some of these things readily available, part of the mobile home. Okay, manufacturer building placement. Okay, this is placing a manufacturer building on off site with specialized equipment. So let's say the mobile home is in a position where it's hard to move out of there. There's trees, there's things in the way. You know, mobile homes years ago were built, they, they weren't built to be as big as they are today. And when you're dealing with some of these communities, it could be hard to maneuver the mobile home. It's not as easy as hook to it, pull it, <clears throat> trying to maneuver it. So there's going to be additional equipment. But again, these things are listed as potentials. If it does not get used, we reduce. So let's say we don't need the building placements, 750 off the bill. Okay, let's keep going. Service truck and trailer, all the equipment and supplies, 150, minimum up to 50 miles. Anything over is $2 per mile and 50 cents per mile dead hauling. Meaning dead hauling end of that is meaning if they take them over from point A to point B, and from point B, they have to come back to point A to their destination. They don't haul it for anybody else. They're going to charge you 50 cents per mile. So, so you see how these bills are, you need to have these breakdowns. Okay. Let's go on to the next page. Transportation permits, they will need, and you want the movers to get them. The last things you have to do when it comes to inspections, permits, let them handle that. This is what they do. Permits uh, that pertain to transporting manufactured buildings, $50. Nothing. Let them be, okay? Transport. Transport building, manufactured building is $850 minimum up to, again, 50 miles, and that's the rest of the rate is we like to keep mobile homes. Anything over is five per mile and dead haul is back to 50 cents again. 850 for that. Okay. Escort. Now, when you think about escorts, and you'll see some mobile homes, they didn't have any escorts, but some do. Why? It is the size, which is the length and the width of the mobile home that has to meet certain criteria. And if it goes over that, it is now considered oversized load. So it depends on how big that mobile home. It could have one escort, it could have two, it could have three. Okay, it just depends. 12 by 60, 14 by 70, 16 by 80. These things range from there. Okay, escort again, 350 uh, minimum up to 50 miles. Anything over, he's adding an extra bill. So notice on that one right there, escort manufacturer building is a 350 minimum up to 50 miles. Uh, anything over is $2 per mile along with 50 cents per, again, dead haul on a 16th, which is the widest of all single wide. But he puts 700. So, so we need to verify why is it 700 if it's 350. You got to catch these things. Okay. Could be a typo. Okay. But I'm seeing double the charge. Lot set single wide. So now this is bringing it into point B. And now it's time to set it up for them to set it up. Uh, actually, this is lot, uh, this is more of a holding. So we are actually going to send it into a storage because the pad where we're going to put the mobile home is still occupied. We'll wait for something for it to come out. Bring it up, clean it up, that sort of thing. So they were going to store for $500. Mobile home storage. Storing a mobile home. Let me scroll up. Storing a mobile home, uh, 250 per floor, 90 days, three months. There is you have a minimum of three months that they will charge for. So that equals an extra $750. Again, that could be gone because maybe you don't need a storage. Maybe you have somebody or someplace where you can take it. Okay. Note the homeowner will be cleaning up the lot where the home came from, along with any deposits the mobile home requires. They list it, and that's good on their part because they don't want to be responsible for, hey, you left a mess back here. You have to come back and housekeep, as they say, right? So again, but you could have an agreement with the community that, hey, well, you know, we're not cleaning or we are. That's between y'all two. So balance would do a grand total of. There you go. We don't lie about the numbers. This is legitimate stuff. I talk about. Four to about 7K. 
Okay, that's about what we're seeing, a single Y on a 50 mile radius. Anything over that, you saw the numbers that go up. Uh, different movers, you'll see that there's different bills, maybe a little different charges, but these are the breakdowns that I wanna see. You got some movers that are still rely on handwriting and well, you know, it's just kind of the way we work and they don't really give you one of these breakdowns. I, you know, this is a contract job that I want a breakdown and I want it because should something go wrong, okay, handshakes are great, but I need paperwork. I need paperwork that breaks down what was done. This was missed. We didn't do this here transport. We didn't do escort. We didn't do, and all these things can be removed, okay? Now, you think about uh, <clears throat> the final price of $6,100. That's too much for a mobile home. That, that's based upon you. You know, I'm not going to comment too much on that. Uh, no deal, no investment is the same, okay? But the one thing to remember is that if you are having this same, same mover, move multiple mobile homes at one time or a steady given a business, as, as you will, then you can maybe haggle them down a little bit down to maybe 5,500 or 5,000 or, or just depends on. But again, remember the 6,100 is a standard number that they're giving us. That bill could double if there's that much more work to be done. Just depends on it, okay? Um, nuggets, that's what I'm here for. Give you nuggets, save you money, save you time, save you stress. If you're doing business with part operators and you're trying to infill the, their pads, but you want to keep the mobile homes anyway, a perfect partnership is, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Park owner, how about you pay for the transportation? I'll pay for the mobile home. I'll focus on the rehab. I'll focus on managing it. I'll focus on getting residents. I'll focus on making sure the lot rent's paid. Win-win. You don't pay for this bill. Bingo. Okay, let's keep going. Confirm and verify the life and the insurance for sure. License insurance, you want to make sure of that. And there's a lot of movers that are not licensed. There's a lot of movers that are not insured. And, and, you know, when I say not licensed, I hope that they're not licensed just as a mover, but I hope they actually have at least a license. You'd be surprised. John got crazy in the middle of the night and decided to move a mobile home. We've heard some stories. We'll leave that for mobile home confessions and cars, okay? Uh, reduce bill where you can, absolutely, anywhere you can. But, you know, one of the things is when you get a, you get what you pay for. I'll say that. That doesn't mean you should look for a good deal. But if you're trying to constantly haggle this price, because we know a couple of movers that will move it for half of this price. They don't come very well recommended. And we've heard of some of the work. You get what you pay for. Just remember that, okay? Uh, transportation, what does it not include? So, that's a great question on that one. And that's a mover. You saw the breakdown of what they're going to do and what it includes. You didn't see anywhere on there where they said they were going to rehook up utilities, put any decks, put any skirting. Okay. None of those things happen. So what happens is they move it from point A, take it completely apart, move it to point B, and they'll set it down, strap up, level it, and they're done. They're done. Now you still have another fee. They're not going to do it, by the way. Movers do not do this. And I say that they're, in the past, we've actually found two movers that would do the above, but they were more also handyman in the mix, if you will. Most movers are not going to do that. So you're going to have a, have to hire a contractor or handyman to do uh, the, do the, uh, the skirting or brick, if you put around the house, to put the decks or porches, okay, to, to hook up the utilities, the water, the power, that sort of thing. That's another bill, rough estimate, two to three K. And that's not including the material, skirting the decks, the porches, you, you see. So again, to keep in mind of moving the mobile home alone, we're at 6,100. We're at another 3,000 for the labor on the additional setup. And we're at another maybe 2,000 on the material. That's another 5,000. We're at 1,100 and 11,100 now. Plus, what do you have in the mobile home? Plus, does it need rehab? Don't let these numbers scare you. That, that still could be a great deal. Maybe you're putting this thing on your property on your on your own land, and you're going to convert it into real estate. Sounds like a phenomenal deal with those kind of numbers. So again, just kind of keep in mind on that. Okay, permits, inspections. Like I said, let them handle it. Some will say no. You have to go get it. It's not horrible to get, but it can be time consuming, and you seem to be bounced around the office quite a bit when you call the building department inspection department they said well talk to him talk to her talk, and you run in circles so you got to find out who's in charge and get that permit one thing to keep in mind before you do any of this okay movers are not going to tell you by the way some movers are very professional and they will but most of them you hired me to do a job my job was to pull it from here take it there that's it that, that's what i do is a haul mobile homes what they won't tell you is was that mobile home even allowed in the county 
in the community where you brought it into. That's not for you to let somebody else tell you. That's for you to verify. You need to call the building inspection. You need to call the county and make sure that, hey, do you allow certain year make model age models? And I know there's a lot of rules that change. There's a lot of for the good, but still there could be some specifics that they don't allow it. In the past, we've had one investor who didn't listen. He decided that I'm in a hurry. It's a good deal. I'm going to buy it. The home itself was a great deal. He got it out of steel, but he brought it into a community where community would have been fine with it, but the county was not. At the end of the day, the county is the one that makes the final rules. Let me stop sharing for a second here. Stop sharing. There we go. And they told him basically when he went to submit the title and to um and to register, they said this home is not allowed. Obviously, he said what's well, already here. It's inside of this community. I parked it in this lot. You got to move it out. Absolutely. Think about 6100 or whatever that bill was at the time, point A to point B, and you're told you get it out. He had to pull that mobile home back out of that community, out of that community, out of that county before he was fine. You will be fine if you bring a mobile home that can't be on there. And I'm talking it could be every week you get a fine, turns into every day. You're going to move the mobile home. That's just the way they see it. So do your research on that as well. If it is allowed, if it is permitted, get it in writing, move forward. OK, when you bring a mobile home from point A to point B, you also have to register it. Same like a vehicle. you got to take the title. you got to go to the county. you got to make sure the taxes are paid up to date in the county where it was originally at and be able to show proof of that. That's a simple printout from online, by the way. Go to tax records, print it out. If it's not paid, pay it. Hopefully you're not buying a mobile home that has 10 years worth of unpaid taxes. That is a problem. But uh, you would take your tax bill proof. You would take your title. And hopefully you got a bill of sale as well. Take it to the county. I'm here to register. 20 bucks, 30 bucks, whatever it may be. Easy, easy peasy once everything's up to par. They will ask for the permits. They will ask for the inspections, which you have copies because the mover got them, right? All this checks out. Most investors won't get at the mobile homes that need to be transported because it, you saw the list that I just, you know, dropped down for you. That could seem like, oh, that's overwhelming. Oh, that's here. Here's what it is. It can be very, and it is very profitable. Very, very profitable if you find the right deal, if you find the right communities, if you find the right connections, the right partnership, especially. It can be a phenomenal deal. Don't let us scare you. If you need coaching, you know where to find us. I'd love to help you with that. Mobile homes, you know, we are moving on average at least five mobile homes a week right now. A few months back, we did our Record breaking from January to April, where we moved 80 mobile homes. That was good. We need to double that. We need to step that up. So, all right. I know it's Father's Day. I, you know, we're not going to stretch this coaching call, but I do want to jump into announcements. Okay. So, announcements. Let's get into that. Uh, every Saturday morning, like I talked about, we do a weekly check in call. So, join us live on Instagram. Okay. That, that's the only place we are on Saturday. I may be out in the field looking at mobile homes like I was Saturday. Go back and watch the replay on that. I may be talking about uh, some hiccups, some issues. You know, the goal is always to add value. We learn from our mistakes. You don't have to make that mistake. I can tell you about it. You can zoom right through. That, that's the goal. Uh, but join us on that Instagram, 10 a.m. Saturdays. Tuesday. This Tuesday is a special Tuesday. There's a lot of inventory that's being uploaded. We're not going to upload it to tomorrow. As a matter of fact, South Carolina, Central Georgia. We got some in Athens, Georgia coming as well. We got some more in South Carolina, Spartanburg. It will be popping up also. You need to be checking that spreadsheet. If you don't have our inventory sheet, send us an email. J, the letter J, at symbol Garcia, M-H-U, dot com. We'll be happy to share that spreadsheet with you. Check it every day. Every day you open it, you're seeing the latest and greatest because it saves every time we upload or change something, okay? Mobile home confessions and cars. I hope you're liking that YouTube hit series. We are off to episode number three, which comes out next Friday. Whatever Friday is. Next Friday, episode number three. Now, the first, uh, the first two episodes that we did, it was me, myself, and I talking about raw footage the behind the scenes never seen you know talk about mobile home investing this confessions episode number three we got an investor friend partner mr nick gunder who's going to be talking with us as well we'll get to share a vehicle we're not having fun with ratio watch it youtube garcia mhu.com all right that's going to do it for this evening i hope you all have a great night happy father's day and we'll see you tuesday night